Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things I like to do within the car washing step and that is actually car washing. So in this episode we're going to be going into a little bit of a deeper dive into the Yum Wash system. So as you know, there are many shampoos, some that add, some that strip, some that just maintain that perfect level and they don't add, they don't strip. So within the spec of my shampoo, what you're going to find is this. So within the Yum Wash, when I was tweaking the formula, there's three things that I really looked at. So you've got foamability of the product, you've got the cleaning power of the product, and you've got the slickness of the product. Everything else goes in the bin for me. So in terms of foamability, let's touch on that for a bit. You will see some shampoos that will claim absolutely ridiculous or ridiculous dilution ratios, 1900, two and a half thousand to one, 47 million to one. And what that basically means per one part shampoo, you can, let's say 2000 to one. One part shampoo to 2000 parts water, okay? So I, personally, I don't really um, measure out my shampoo now. I just put it in, I know what a squeeze is, I know what two squeezes is. Now, that's the kind of dilution ratios and the foamability of the product. Now, the cleaning power of the product, again, when you're doing maintenance washes, personally me, I wash this car three times a week. I wash my other cars three times a week as well. So in terms of cleaning power, the way I tweak this is you do not want a shampoo that is on a massive pH scale. So basically, every time you wash your car, rather, so it works like this, so two steps, well, one step forward, two steps back, you know, all the time. So you're constantly stripping away protection, which also means you have to put heavier kind of protective elements on and always keep topping them up. Now, I do not like doing that, because um, at the end of the day, look, the sun's peeking out. I don't want to be wheeling the car back in there and applying, you know, a Yum Ceramic treatment or Yum Max treatment every wash. So in terms of the cleaning power, first of all, it's pH neutral. Right, so if you don't know what that means, it's right slab bang in the middle, so pH 7, that won't add and it won't remove. Now, we've rated the shampoo to be using direct sunlight, so once again, look, blue skies above me and you're going to see it in a second. Um, so what that basically means in terms of rated in the sun, not many companies actually do this. As you know, shampoos will dry, they leave water spots, streaks, you can't get them off, you start to both black car, scratch, done, you know, so you get where I'm going with this. The slickness element of this wash, which is the third part, that is my number one concern, right? This is again, I'm using black as a perfect example, it's the worst colour for seeing scratches. The way they're lacked, reflects, refract, black you will see the most, white you will see the least that's just the way the color spectrums work the way our eyes work and the way the sun hits kind of the panels and comes back at you so slickness what does that mean so let's say this whole panel is a rock okay for example this is a big rock the whole purpose of slickness is yes you're going to do the yum citrus pre-treatment the yum foam multiple rinses as you've already seen now if you do still have stuff on the car which again you will do because nothing's ever you know, 100% clean before you do a contact wash, hence why the contact wash exists. The whole purpose is, this is the rock, you want to potentially, if you do hit something, so this rock, the mitt glides, first of all, over it as easy as possible, and also underneath it, you want as little or as least resistance as you can on the panel, both on unprotected and protected cars. Now, I'm going to give you an analogy which will actually make total sense to you. I always say, and obviously the real people who know real cars will also agree with me on this, that the tyres is the only thing that's keeping you on the road. No matter how much power you've got, what braking system you've got, carbon ceramics, all these type of things, the tyres is still what's keeping you on the road, nothing else. So why would you go and cheap out on budget tires on any car by the way but the more in high performance the more the adage kind of goes so this is the only thing that's keeping your road and that's the only thing that's keeping your life potentially in a life-threatening situation so this is the same thing let me explain to you in a, a very simple term you are in essence moving particles of dirt grit sand 100 other things on the paint like this so what do you think you know it's it's abrasion 
Abrasion with clear coat equals swirls and scratches. Washing and drying is the two most damaging things you can ever do to your car. So this is why you want a super slick shampoo. So again, I've explained the three things that I looked at within like, you know, our formula. This is what I really tweaked for. This is what was really important to me. Everything else goes right out the window. So this doesn't add, it doesn't strip. Super slick. The foamability of it is good, but it's not one of these shampoos where you, you just, I call it a, a reactivating shampoo. I mean, I'm sure you've used these shampoos. You keep rinsing it off and it just keeps activating and activating and you're literally rinsing a car for 45 minutes and there's just foam in the jams. It's just not coming out. Comment down below if you have used a shampoo like this. Now, some people like this, fair enough. I absolutely hate it. So this shampoo rinses clean, right? Now, you may be looking at, why is there a PF22? during the washing stage. Now I found a certain thing uh, around five years ago that as soon as I found it, obviously I trialed it a couple of times, as soon as I kind of nailed the process, I thought, wow, where the hell has this process been all my life? So this is what happens. Obviously I've already cleaned the wheels. I've done a Yum Citrus and a Yum Foam treatment. Again, as you can see, there's foam all over the floor. So it's been rinsed, right? The car is now sitting wet, ready for a contact stage. Now, rather than putting, you know, the desired amount of shampoo into your wash bucket. What I do now is, so I've put 150 milliliters of Yum Wash, obviously filled it right to the top, as always with all chemicals, especially the Yum Wash, because it's a heavy substance. It sinks down to the bottom, give it a good shake. Now, I'm gonna snow foam the car again, but rather than having a Yum Foam, I'm gonna have the Yum Wash in there. Now, it's gonna have many benefits, but I'm gonna outline you the most important ones. Perfect example, the weather is beating down right now onto the car. The panel temperatures are getting warmer, right? So this is going to, so this is if you do not have uh, deionized water, obviously you don't do a mid rinse in deionized water. So what you're gonna do is the, the Yum Wash system is actually gonna be laid on the panel all over the car and it's actually going to be neutralizing the water, right? It is so important to get this through. It is better for something like this to dry in your panel rather than normal water because this does not have the things that normal tap water has. Magnesium, calcium, all these type of things which dry, evaporate and leave water spots now as well. It's good to obviously have it in your wash bucket, but also to have a huge layer of foam on your car that is super lubricated. First of all, it's gonna make your washing experience better like a luxury washing experience it's going to give you a bit more bite during the wash obviously because you, you've got more cleaning chemical or product onto the car and second of all like i told you about the whole rock analogy you've got an inch of foam a ton of shampoo in the bucket it's going to be so slick so if you do catch something you don't need to worry about it all right so how much do you put into the bucket like i've already said i've got 150 mils in the foam cannon, rest with water. Now, like I always say, always give chemicals a good shake. Now, I'm not gonna have a pop of brands, but I'm just going to put it out into the ether here. Some people or some companies, you'll look on the back of the bottle and it says per 20 liters of water, you need to put five mil of shampoo, right? Which is probably in essence of this, right? Maybe a bit more, that's it, right? That's probably five mil. Now, obviously, this is a 25 litre bucket. This is one of the biggest buckets you can get within the industry. Right, you've seen how much I've put in there. I disagree with this method. Reason is, in this bottle, there is many, many raw materials that make a stable formula, right? More raw materials go into more kind of high-end shampoos. This, along some other brands as well, I've got some unbelievable shampoos. Now, if you even have 500 mil of pure slickening agent, obviously you put that into the bucket, it's not gonna do anything for you. Obviously it's got no cleaners, it's got no foam, it's got none of the actual stuff that makes a shampoo formula a shampoo formula. So even then five mil isn't enough. But as I said, imagine this has got 60 active raw ingredients within 500 mil worth of product. Obviously you mix it all together. How much do you really think 
the three important things, cleaning power, formability, slickness is within this bottle, right? So when you put five mil on the back of a bottle to put into a 20, or in this case, a 25 liter body of water, something doesn't make sense because don't forget, you really need to put active material within the bucket. You don't see Redox on the back of their bottle saying fill a bath, three, four hundred litres, however much a bath can hold, depending on your bath, obviously. Um, and you don't see Redox saying um, put 0.3 mil for every bath. You just don't see because you need, like I said, you need the actual body of, imagine this is particles, you need the actual particles of the washing system within the bucket, obviously you agitate it. If you put five mil, into a bucket, you agitate it. You have, you have no active raw materials. You have zero. So, right, so what I recommend is doing this. One, two. So how much is that? So each squirt you're looking at probably around 50 mil. So I've just put in 100 mil of product within the bucket. Now, this is the trick. This bucket, the black one, contains pretty much 100% pure clean water with, with one of my wash pads. Now in here, you've got about 50% water. So if, where is this? In fact, you can probably see that on camera. So 50%. The reason I've done this is what a lot of people do is they'll put the yum wash within an empty bucket and either hose it in or under a tap. So what you're gonna find is you're gonna have useless suds. So you're gonna fill it right up to here you're going to have foam popping out everywhere. But if you look at how much exactly water you have, you'll probably have just above the grid guard. So that's not enough. So pre-fill it with empty water, fill it with the young wash, and then this is the trick. I'm going to show you what to do next. So what you do now is with your hose or pressure washer, preferably pressure washer, look. So I've put it all the way down, and I'm going to fire it, right? And then I'm going to, first of all, mix it against the grid guard so the solution's even, and I'm going to start slowly lifting it out. So again, that's mixed now. Can you hear that sound? That's now the shampoo solution getting frothed up. And you start lifting it out slowly. There we go. So, that is now, as you can see, right perfectly towards the top level. You've actually inserted even more water in there, but the, uh, the shampoo solution has been evenly distributed and agitated. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna form the car and we're gonna just perform your normal two bucket wash method. So as always, you give it a good shake, hook it up to the SGS gun and begin foaming. Now, this is the trick. You've got aerated solution all over the vehicle. You then take your wash pads. Again, this is not a how-to video. This is how I do it. And again, proofs in the pudding. The car is perfect every time. And guess what? I get no water spots in direct sunlight in the summer. So again, you start top down, like I said on the previous video, do the basics right and everything else will fall into place. So top down, each panel, nothing complicated. And what do you feel? I know it's very hard to actually see this, but what do you actually feel in real life when you do this method? You've got your wash in the bucket, you've got it in your pad, you've got it through a cannon on, on the actual paint. 
and it's just so slick. Like, guys, I can't tell you just how slick this is feeling. And what you're gonna find with this method is you're actually emulsifying the dirt. It's almost acting as a snow foam once again. So the whole manual agitation part, you're just literally moving it. You're lifting it from the surface as safely as you can. So please try this method. Honestly, I've, I tell this method to everybody who manages to come down to the HQ. If anybody says, well, how can I hone in my process? Trust me, this is one of those things. You'll absolutely love it. And the most important thing, you can actually wash your car every day of the week if you want. Every day. And you'll have swill-free paint. So guys, that is it. See, the Yum wash is still on the car. It's time for me to do a final rinse. But it is imperative that you try and put as much of the solution and as much of the raw material as you can onto the panel. As I said, it neutralizes it. Just look at the sky, not a single cloud in the sky. So obviously the sun is constantly beating down on the car. So you want to actually get sunny side first, of course, um, but at the minute it's which side is it hitting first? So it's hitting obviously the passenger side. So this is why I washed this side first. You want to get this shampoo solution onto the car, let it do its business of neutralizing it. Again, it's got great cleaning power, but if your car is super well protected and you do it more than often on a regular basis, then that doesn't really matter either. The manual agitation part will always be the final step to where you're actually lifting the dirt from the panel into the wash pad. You're rinsing it out in the rinse bucket and putting it back into the wash bucket. But apart from that, that is my way of using the Yum Wash. Um, this is obviously my formula. I designed it to what I like. Uh, and so far it's been a popular product of many people. Um, but I'm interested. Comment down below, what is your method of washing the car? I'll be very interested. Anyway guys, as always, hope you've enjoyed it um, and hopefully I will catch you next week on next week's video and we're going to touch on to something special there. Cheers guys and I'll see you on the next one.